What's up guys, it's Bo here again, and welcome to another Bo Jinjin vlog. Um, I'm back to my car in this entry, and uh, I don't know if you can hear or see, but it's kind of a uh, typical British weather. You know, what, more, what more can I say about that? But anyway, I uh, hope you're having a good day. In this entry, I wanted to talk about... Um, well, I wanted to talk about self-love. You know, that's the topic of this entry. Um, but self-love as it... Um, uh, self-love as it kind of relates to... Um, well, I've, I've done some entries prior to this about self-love, right? Um, and kind of why it is the the kind of practice that we really ought to be uh, plugging into or engaging in um, as we kind of move into the future, right? Because as Teal Swan says, um, or has mentioned, um, the age that we live in, although technologically advanced, is one of uh, emotional, um, emotional ignorance in, in a sense you know it's we live in a society that is energetically insensitive which means that we are overly fixated on um, physicality and logic and abstract ideas um, such that we have basically uh, abandoned or forgotten about almost we've become unconscious to the sides of us that really um, we came into this, this life with, you know, life gave us this this wonderful gift of energetic sensitivity to us as a gift, right? But we have forgotten it, right? In in place of, you know, in lieu of, you know, the fancy things you see around you, right? And that has ultimately spawned the problem, but... Um, so, self-love is essentially the practice that I and many other kind of spiritual teachers and you know thought leaders in the world like would ba are basically have basically you know recognized and point pinpointed essentially as one of the major things that we need to kind of start to well that we as teachers and leaders and if you are one yourself need to basically start to teach people but then also you know just generally speaking it's something that we all need to start to integrate into our life our life experiences, you know, like, we all need more self-love, right? And I'm going to kind of break even further into why this is in this entry, right? So, you know, if you're familiar with my videos, or if you, you know, if you're interested, then my kind of general approach, you know, my, my kind of general take on these is, um, Ultimately, like, my focus is, like, teaching about, you know, things like emotional intelligence. I do get a, a bit philosophical in a lot of my entries, you know, I just have random ideas, you know, I'm an ideas person. I just come up with these ideas, and I think that are interesting, and then I share them, right? But, you know, my general kind of premise is, like, teaching people how to become emotionally savvy, how to love themselves. But then, obviously, like, that is just my kind of form of teaching, you know. And obviously, as someone watching this video, like, you know, it's then important for you to then understand, you know, why am I teaching this, right? You know, you need some kind of grounded reason why why you should listen to what I'm saying. And that would happen to be basically, well, in short, it, it's, to find, it's to find peace in life, right? You know, because, you know, again, I mentioned this many times in my videos, but because we're energetically insensitive, it means that we're not able to find authentic happiness in life. Like, a lot of us, you know, we, we go in the direction of what um, we have been told will lead to our happiness, but then when we actually... Most of us don't even reach that point, but, like, you know, when we come to start to try and put that into practice, it's like, fuck. Like, you already have that feeling. You know, you can at least feel that, like, this may not work for you. You're just like, oh, man, do I really have to do this in order to be happy? And then, and so, my kind of arena, which is, you know, emotional sensitivity, emotional intelligence, um, independent thinking as well, is to get you to, for yourself, 
learn to tap into your sensitivity such that you then you can once again find that voice within you that tells you what will make you happy, right? Like a lot of what we are focused on in life, like is, is very like unnecessary hard work, right? You know, a lot of it, to be fair, is necessary. You know, like there is a fight aspect to life. You do need to like, we didn't come into this life to be like, you know, to be molly coddled and like led by the hand. And I would even go so far as to say that like, where we find ourselves nowadays, even though many of us are miserable and alone or whatever, like, compared to, like, some of the shit that human beings have had to gone through in the past, I would, you know, I would consider that what we're going through now is pretty tame, right? We don't really have to worry about, like, disease and, like, nature, like, you know, predators and things like that, like, you know, opposition between, like, fellow human beings, like, we don't really have to deal with that so much, you know? So, like, you know, it, it's okay, like, you know, from that perspective, like, what we're going through isn't necessarily that, you know, harrowing, right? Um, but, and, and so, kind of, so, so that's kind of the reason why I teach it, you know, and also, you know, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, to put it in, in, like, in a nutshell, it's basically, like, learning to build your own life, you know, of happiness, because you could follow, like, you know, what other people tell you is, is the path to happiness, like, earning a lot of money, um, you know, or, like, finding that special person, or whatever it is, you know, like, there are many kind of, like, stories that we're told, like, you know, this, this is what an ideal life is like. You could argue that even I am, um, in, a, in a sense, presenting you with something like this, but, you know, again, you know, my message is, well, my hope, my wish is for you, as is the case for myself, to be able to, you know, to be able to design your own version of what you think is, you know, your kind of destiny, let's say, you know, like what will, what will bring you happiness in life, right? That's my wish. That's why I teach. Um, but, so... We, so... As, as well, we find ourselves like in a, in a in a time when things are kind of unprecedented, right? You know, like I made I did an entry about you know how the middle class is collapsing, where I talk about basically how um, you know like the middle class dream, as it were, the dream, the kind of societal dream that is pitched to the average person that's been kind of going on for like decades and decades, ever since you you know like civilization started to become industrialized, you know. Uh, capitalism started to, to, you know, consumerism started to, like, kind of take over the collective um, consciousness, let's, let, let's just say. That was when, you know, there was this, they, they ar there arose this kind of ideal of, like, you know, fi like, going through school, right? You know, going through school, getting a good job, you know, starting a family, and then just, like, saving and, and you know, just approaching life in this, in this certain way that is considered, like, the, the middle class ideal, right? But I argued in that in, in that entry that I did that this dream is collapsing. You know, this dream is becoming more and more, uh, well, more, more more and more kind of like difficult to uphold because like the world is changing at such a rapid pace. You know, there are like the population of human like of human beings is like is increasing ever quickly. You know. Such that, like, it, it's it's getting more and more difficult for you to just, like, simply, like, kind of, like, essentially, like, cruise through life in that kind of a way. So, and, and uh, you know, moreover, you know, many of us are finding that, like, you know, particularly the younger generations, you know, myself and then the, the generations, like, younger than myself, we're finding that, like, if we're following this, this middle class ideal that our parents have espoused, like, it actually makes us feel trapped and you know, like, kind of very, just, like, not very, like, connected with life, and, like, not very expectant for life and stuff like that, you know, many of us find ourselves just, like, not, like, just not, just getting lost, right? Um, and so, like, what it, what is, what is requ required now is that we start to take a helm of our own, take the helm of our own lives, basically, you know, because the middle class ideal was literally, like, the government will take care of you, you know, you just need to, like, go to school, get a good job, get married, you know, follow the established institutions, and you'll be fine, right? But it's getting to the point where, like, that's no longer working because the world is changing at such a pace, and because various things are being revealed to us. 
like there's there's a whole number of factors really you know I you know if I was to go into the debate fully and to express my full opinion it would take a lot a long time but like there are many reasons why the world is changing thus thusly but like it, you know we're at the, we're at a juncture in in you know our point in history that we as individuals need to start to think about what you know like like to kind of think outside the box you know okay maybe the government won't take care of me so much anymore or, or rather like maybe i can't rely on the fact uh, on the belief that the government for example will take care of me for the rest of my life you know particularly in your, if you're in the younger generation if your parents are te essentially telling you to just like go with this ideal because it's what it's what worked for them right you know the government will ultimately take care of you you know like don't rock the boat too much like there's no need to do that you know the like, government will take care of you but as many of us younger people know like that's not the case it's not going to be the case for much longer and so like it's time for us to to look into um look into way like you know, look into like owning our own lives and designing our own structures in our lives you know and not necessarily relying on the established traditions or whatever you know to like like and ex and then expect to have a good life out of it right and you know that was a bit of background a bit of like you know kind of like rambling background about that but like the importance of self-love right and of course self-love is in like the definition of self-love to my mind anyway is the, the ability to take care of yourself emotionally ultimately because a lot of how we see the world and then how and then the kind of like the energy with which we we go and attack the world let's just say comes from our our emotional you know well-being you know like we we obsess over like well it's easier to talk about like things like physical health but like something like emotional health which is like equally if not more important is not really talked about right because because i guess our consciousness is not yet there but like this is the kind of area that we need to focus on now and traditionally you know love and when i talk about love i'm really talking about healing right you know i'm really talking about healing you know there are many different definitions of love but like when i'm talking about self-love here i'm talking about self-healing essentially and love in terms of healing so like is it you know from a practical sense you know you go about when you go about your life you have phases when you forge and then you have phases when you heal right it's like when you go to the gym you have phases when you're like ripping your muscle like in training so that you like I don't, like what's the word for it is it anabolic or, cat or catabolic i'm not sure which one it is like i'm not like a health expert but like um yeah you know you, you go to the gym and you rip your muscles but then you have to rest right and this is ultimately what love is about, right? And traditionally, we've always viewed love as something that others give to us, right? We've always thought of love as something that, that people give to us, which is why we are so obsessed with things like romantic relationships, you know? We think that, like, we, like, we can only be whole, you know, we can, on we can only be healed and accepted and appreciated if someone else will do that for us, right? But what I am discovering, you know, what many, you know, kind of, like, spiritual leaders um and like you know healers and people like that and light workers are discovering is that like you know it's getting to a point where like you know we can no longer rely or expect other people to do that for us we need to start to learn to do it for ourselves right and and so we need to you know in, in matt khan's wo uh, words who you know matt khan is another kind of amazing uh, spiritual teacher and leader who's also doing amazing work um, you know, he he talks about like like becoming your own loving, some supportive companion, right? Because that, that's ultimately what the goal is, right? So it's not delegating, you know, the act like the kind of like the, the not waiting until someone gives you like the the kind of gesture which will then allow you to go into that feeling of like oh I'm accepted now, oh I'm loud now, and to like you know, to kind of like build the courage to do that for yourself, right? And it does take a bit of courage, right? Because, you know, it's just, we're so, we're just conditioned that way. You know, we're just conditioned to like, even like, you know, like, it's, it's funny. It's funny to me, right? Because I am someone who has been on, you know, this self-love journey for quite a while now, like a couple of years. And I see, like, you know, average people 
like, who are basically, like, trapped in this subconscious prison where they're ultimately waiting for life to give them permission to do whatever the fuck they want to do. And a, and a lot of the times, like, it's not even, like, what they actually want to do. It's, like, this truncated, like, shitty version. And, like, they just settle for the fact that they get a validation from other people. They don't need, they're, they're not even, like, individualistically, like, they're not even, like, personally, like, fulfilled by what they engage in. Like, they just, like, they just get by by the scraps of validation that other people feed them, right? And it's just deeply ironic, right? You see people who, like, they go, they, they jump through hoops and, like, they go through all of these things. And, like, the frame they're, they're approaching it with is, like, look how strong I am. Look how, like, the part that then they're subconscious about is, like, look how much I match this societal ideal. You know, because everyone likes to think that, like, they have their best interest, like, they have their own best interest in, in mind. But a lot of the times, they're actually subconsciously follow following, like, an external ideal. You know, they're not actually doing what they resonate with or what they believe in. They're doing what, they're doing what they believe will, you know, once, if they do that thing, it will get people to love them. You know, like, like a really kind of aggressive male, for example, who seems really kind of abrasive and like aloof and like, you know, like he doesn't give a shit about other, other people. It's funny, he's, uh, ironically, he's acting that way because, like, he thinks that that is the way that he needs to act to get love from, like, say, like, a female, right? That's, like, like, when you think about it, it's fucking ridiculous. Or, like, a woman might, um, you know, act in a way, like, where she's, like, loving and supportive, but, like, actually, and, and like, and she uses that, like, you know, look, look how, like, look how, look how, like, you know, supportive I have I am of my friends and all of this stuff right but like she's but deep down she's resentful but she like but you know but like she makes it appear as though like she you know she's doing it like and whatever right but like again you know that one's a bit hazy because I'm not female so like the, the example of male is like more kind of like clear to me but like you know that, that's just how it is right and it's the same with love right um ultimately we think that like we have to be fulfilled from externally but it's now time for us to like basically like relocate the power to ourselves right i talk about self-love in this entry but really like you know like the, the examples i've just given you like it kind of applies to all aspects of life are you living for yourself or are you subconsciously living for someone like for other people thinking that it's you're living for yourself but really you're living for an idea of how you should be right and the the way that you tell this, the way that you tell this, which takes a bit of courage, because, like, how scary is it, like, to, to have to face the possibility that you've all along, you've been facing this subcon- Like, you, th you thought that you were, like, living for yourself, but you were actually living for other people. How scary is that, right? I can empathize. I was there. I am there, so, like, a lot of the times, right? It's scary to, like, face this shit. You know, it's deep, dark, emotional shit. But I love it. <laughs> but, like, yes, and, like, basically like you have to like face and, and like the and the way you tell is you tap into your sensitivity that is why so many of us are so unhappy so unfulfilled so lonely and desperate even though they're doing all of this stuff that supposedly and they act in such a way like to signify that like they're receiving so much love from everyone else the reason they're still unfulfilled is because they're insensitive to their, to their energy so they can't tell if they're actually living for themselves or that they're living for someone else thinking that they're living for themselves right that's how you tell it's a scary journey but that's how you do it right you know it's it's not all scary right it it is what it is you know it's the same as like if you build a business or if you build a body you know like a healthy body or if you you um do whatever else you you, you put your mind to doing in life you know because life life is about the journey right it's just another part of the journey, right? So, like, you have good times, you have bad times, right? But anyway, so, additionally, what I observed in, like, the kind of the people around me as well is, like, it's also important, like, it's also important. So, like, I've talked about, you know, kind of, like, uh, self-love. Self-love as being, like, the, the vehicle that will allow us to, you know, find fulfillment and happiness and all of that stuff um, in a time that's increasingly chaotic where we, like, you know, things are becoming more and more unpredictable in the world. And, but, like, say, like, you want to, you know, practically, you know, you want to, like, become successful. You want to achieve something in life, right? 
or, you know, whatever that is, no, no matter how kind of like small it is, you know, you know, it doesn't have to be really ambitious, but like when you start to tap into self-love, like when you start to love yourself and not ha like not have to wait for other people to love you, then you stop being so affected by other people's judgments, right? You know, I did I did an entry about judgment uh, previously, like I think it was two entries before this one, and the reason like we're so affected by that is because you know we're so like we have such little self love, right? When you lack self love. Like, every criticism that someone throws in your direction, even if it is well-meaning, because, like, not all criticism is meant to hurt. A lot of it is. Like, to be fair, like, you know, when you're in, like, a, a place of low vibration, like, when you're in, like, amongst, like, kind of poor people, both financially and also spiritually and emotionally, mentally, like, you know, a lot of the times, like, criticism is, is like, a judgment that's meant to hurt you. Because, like, it's, it's coming from, like, an ego-hurt place. It's coming from someone who does not have self-love themselves, and so, like, the only way that they can feel better is to attack you, like, ultimately. So, you know, there is that truth. But the person who lacks self-love will, will, like, take any criticism hurled their way and take it personally, basically. They'll get hurt by it. And it's like, you know, you talk to someone. This is how I see it, right? You know, being someone who, who has at least started to practice self-loving. It's like, you, you can tell as soon as you give someone some constructive criticism that they're going to, like, take it personally. And, like, they may take offense to it and, and attack you back, or they may go into self-loathing. You know, because they, because you know, self-loathing, self-hating, low vibration, like, it begets more low vibration self-hating. It's like, you know, you can tell. It's like, if I give you this piece of constructive criticism, like, I'm not, like, I don't mean to hurt you. I'm just, you know, giving you a piece of information that might support you in your journey, right? But it, but I, I know back at the deep of my, like at, you know, at the back of my mind that if I tell this piece of information to certain people, they're either going to attack me back and be defensive, or they're going to like, like start beating themselves up about it. Like I tell someone, you know, maybe sometimes you're a bit kind of like like maybe maybe you can see, see things this way, or maybe like if if you this sometimes you do this and it makes me feel this way. You know, it's just like. Like, I'm not, I don't want you to take it personally, it's just like, you know, you, like, you might want to have a look at that, you know? Like, sometimes there's not, like, a very, like, you know, kind of, sh like, you know, like, a very kind of really nice way of putting it to someone, you know? Like, I expect people to tell me, to tell me, like, if something is wrong with me, right? It's, it's just, like, it's just how it is, right? But, like, I can tell, like, once, as soon as I tell them, they're going to get defensive, or they're going to, um, they're going to be like, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I fucking suck. And you're like, no, you don't. You don't suck. You just have, you just do this thing, you know, and, you know, we all have problems, but it doesn't mean you suck as a person. And they're like, no, I fucking suck. <laughs> you know, you can tell that they already have that energy, you know, it's like, as soon as you tell them, they're going to like adopt that kind of an energy. But, and, and that kind of an energy is obviously the kind of energy, like, it's like negative spiral energy. You know, that, that's how, like, people get stuck in low vibration, is because, like, low, like, you know, you hate yourself, so you keep hating yourself, and you keep hating yourself, and you don't have the kind of, you don't have the perspective which comes about from, like, self-love to see things in a way that's productive for you, to see potentially how, okay, this person said this to me, it may not have been comfortable, but at least, like, but at least, you know, Okay, I know that it doesn't mean that I'm a terrible person that's unfixable. It just means, okay, well, actually, he has a point. Like, maybe I can try this, or, like, maybe I can talk about this with them more, and maybe I can learn something more about myself, and, like, we can all talk about it and, like, you know, focus on, like, how to, like, move forwards, you know? Which, may, which seems, seems very scary for someone who isn't self-loving, but, like, when you start to self-love, when you start to, like, love yourself, you know, I've given you tools on how to do this, like, one of them is allowing yourself, which means, you know, Teal Swan calls it, like, following the path of least resistance, right? It means, in that moment, when you have a desire, to honor that desire, like, whether that be to, like, eat some shitty junk food, you know, to watch some shitty thing on YouTube, to, I don't know, jerk off, <laughs> you know, like, whatever it is, right, you know, Allowing yourself to do that, and then letting that, that even that, like, if that activity might be unproductive and, 
escapism, like, you know, it, it's allowing your body to heal, you know, because, like, yes, it's important to get somewhere in life, but, like, again, you know, like, you don't make muscle in a gym by, go by like, just going to the gym, like, you'll fucking kill yourself, right? You need to, like, do the, the gym work, but then heal also. Let your body heal, and that involves relinquishing all resistance. It means allowing, right? You know? Um, even just, like, yeah, you know, allowing yourself to, like, to express yourself. You know, I did an entry about talking to yourself, where I gave this tool about going out and recording yourself talking, or just having confidence, like, go for a walk in the park or somewhere secluded, or, you know, go to your, go into your bedroom or something, and then just, like, talk, you know, and just talk what, about what's ever on, whatever's on your mind without any judgment, right? No one's there to judge you. You know, that is another act that you can use to, to like, you know, practice this self-love, right? And so, and, you know, you'll find that if you, if you keep doing this, then, like, you know, you will you will, you know, you will start to focus more positively towards life, you know, yet, like, no, life isn't going to become, like, you know, this, this utopia where nothing goes wrong anymore, no, like, life is always going to be life, we, we all, we still hurt, we still, like, get depressed, you know, I sure as hell get depressed all the time, I get angry, I get, I'm just like, fuck life, but, like, at the same time, you know, in the same way that, you know, you eat more, like, healthy, like, I did another, I did an entry about this, like, eating raw, like fruit and veg like for at least four times a week you know you do that and like your your life circumstance will subtly change over time and it will become better and like you start to like be able to like focus more on like higher pursuits and higher expressions of your love and the passion and and joy right you know and, and so like so my message in this video like is it's really in a way it's really kind of directed to the kind of person like who's like kind of like like, the kind of person who might not be watching these videos, because, like, I'm sure, like, most people who would be watching these kinds of videos are, like, you know, the kind of switched on, like, aware, conscious, you know, energetically sensitive kind of person. But, like, I guess, in a way, like, if, you, if you're, if you like, that kind of a person, and you know other people who are, you know, um, struggling, like, maybe you could show them this video, or maybe you can, like, start to practice, like, in, and prioritize your own kind of act of self-love, you know, your own practice of self-love, and then, you know, lead by example for these people, right? Because, you know, that's what ultimately I'm going to do, right? So cool. There's a lot to be said about this subject, you know. Um, there's there's a book that I'm currently reading. And there's another book that I have in my sights, you know. One of which is by Teal Swan, which is, which is called um, Shadows Before Dawn. Which is her book about self-love and how she went from, like, a rather shitty life situation, like... If you think your life situation is shitty, like, read about Teal Swan's past, like, you know, you'll be like, okay, fair enough. Like, and then how she managed to basically break through from that and, like, start to, like, really prioritize self-loving. And then the other book is Whatever Arises, Love That, which is by Matt Carnell's, like, uh, the other spiritual teacher I mentioned. And, you know, they're both l books about self-love, essentially, you know, which is the new thing that, like, we need to really focus on in this coming kind of, like, age. This coming new age, this new future. I'm kind of excited about it, you know, the more I talk about it, the more excited I become. You know, yes, it's rocky, but, like, that just means that, like, whatever comes from this should be pretty awesome, right? So cool. I hope this entry's been helpful, as always. I hope you're having a good day, and I will catch you in the next entry. Peace out. Yeah!